Welcome to The Drive Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Atia. If you like this video, please let me know by subscribing to the channel or visiting my website to become a member for more exclusive content. There was this a couple nights where I thought, so this isn't going to work. I've tried everything. This doesn't work. I feel lost. I'm, I'm so broken. I'm so scared. Emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially. I didn't know how we were going to do it. And so I... I ended up, I mean, I, I, people talk about this in the chapter, but I ended up just saying like, I'm going to talk to my son because I knew he was 12 and I knew he was in a bad spot. So when, uh, tell me about that. Tell me about like what you saw in both of them over that six month period of time. Just like, I mean, if you have kids, just like, especially I'm guessing like after Christmas, right? So it was, my guess is it's a blur through Thanksgiving and Christmas it's hell, yep. and then January. Just so dark dark in every way like it's january is dark to begin with but when you've lost the person that you worshipped and the person that kind of was the light in our family like he was just he was great he was a great dad they were so sad and confused and just a different level of sad like the saddest like they just got screwed for their whole lives and they'll never be normal again and kids just want to be normal and they want to go to school and they don't want to be the person that's dealing with the great tragedy. Um, they were embarrassed. They were. How do you know that? They would say it's just like the worst to not have a dad. It's so embarrassing not to have a dad. Mm. You know, like it's just awful. And like nobody will talk to me. Jack says no one. He says no one makes fun of me anymore. No one jokes with me. Parents look down when I walk past them. He said everyone avoids me. So because you don't know what to say. And then there's always the kids who the parent was like, you go say something to them. And mm. they're like, sorry, your dad died. <laughs> you know, or something like that. But we just, I couldn't, we'd done a bunch of counseling. Counseling wasn't working at the time. We couldn't find the right fit for everybody. And I've learned a lot about trauma since then, but I think it was a little early for the kids to be forced to talk about it. And I don't know if you've read um, What Happened to You, the Oprah Winfrey no. book with um, Bruce. I don't know who, I don't know. But she talks about like kids, it takes a while for them to be able, be able to process what they saw and felt. Whereas adults, we have enough life experience to, to be able to talk about it. But watching their dad die wasn't something they could talk about, but I kept trying to force them to do counseling and be like, tell us about the day your dad died. And they would just, you know, they would close their ears literally physically and rock. And I'd be like, I am, no, you, we are going to talk about this. So I did a lot of things that I thought. That's was, really interesting. They would literally react that way. Like a baby. Like they would go like. Like I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Mm -hmm. And what did the therapist think of that? Did they recognize that as a sign that they just weren't ready to talk yes. about this yet? Yeah. I mean, eventually, eventually, but they would do things like, and I don't want to say stupid things, but like my daughter didn't want to draw about it. She didn't want to like take a crayon and show her dad dying at Sky Zone. Um, she really needed to forget about it for a bit to integrate what she saw. My son's a little more mature and he really needed someone to talk to other than me. Like he needed someone who didn't have a dog in the fight to talk about what it felt like to lose his dad. So he actually, over time, had a great relationship with a therapist for a year. And then as the 40-year-old that he is inside, at the end, he was like, I think I'm done for now. Thank you so much for your help. And I'll call you if I need you again. But Jack really had um, a clear intention at that age of what he needed through this. And he said, it's just nice to go talk to a woman that will listen to me. And that was a, a dig at me because he's like, all you do is talk to me. Thank you.